Hello everyone, thanks for checking out my video. Welcome to my channel, Jersey Shore Pondscapes Videos. My name is Chris, and as usual, we're talking all about koi ponds, waterfalls, water gardens, pond filtration, fish, aquatic plants, the whole bit here. <laughs> Got a ton of videos for you guys. If you're new to the channel, please uh, check it out. There's a lot of information and a lot of videos on many, many, many topics. <laughs> and um, I also have a website called pondscapesandmore.com. Um, where I do all kinds of uh, articles and blogs on, on different products, uh, different reviews. You can purchase some, some of my um, favorite, most recommended products there off my website for your pond, as well as um, wild bird um, information, you know, feeding and attracting wild birds. Um, just something I enjoy on the side too, and it's all part of the nature that comes around your pond, right? So. Um, yeah, so please check that out and um, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, you know, it really helps me out. I really appreciate the support. Um, okay, so today's video, we are going to be talking a little bit about gravity-fed filter systems. Um, I put gravity-fed filter systems in every pond that I build, okay? Um, Four-inch bottom drains. Uh, I do have other videos here on this channel talking about uh, how to use bottom drains and also um, about gravity-fed filters, all right? So um, you can check those videos out. Um, the pictures are up here of the video, so you can see, um, you know, which video to look for on my channel. So we're going to expand on these gravity-fed filters a little bit today. We're going to be talking about the plumbing, okay, that goes into these, how to uh, hook them up, um, as well as how I clean them, okay. So we're, we're definitely going to, you know, expand on this whole gravity-fed filter system thing here. Um, so, as I said, I use gravity-fed filters on every pond that I build. I, I, it's the only thing I do, okay? The only time I use, you know, a, like a bead filter or something separate is with a pond that's already existing that I can't install bottom drains into. All right, then, you know, we have to do what's the next best thing. Now, um, the gravity-fed filters can also be used with bead filters as well. So basically, um, they're not necessary, okay? I, want, I don't want to say that if I build a pond with my gravity-fed filter that I have to invest in a bead filter for it as well. Um, we don't. The only time that I use that is if I know there's going to be a heavy fish load or if the client, you know, is... Um, not worried about the cost, I just want to do the best thing possible, okay? Um, so in that um, respect, what we'll do is I'll run my four inch bottom drains or skimmers with four inch pipes gravity fed into a um, filter tank set in the ground and then the pump will pull it out of there through a bead filter at that point through a UV sterilizer, and then back to the pond. Um, the bead filters, when used after my gravity-fed filter systems, stay extremely clean, okay? Really, really clean. Um, the backwashing is almost hardly necessary because everything, all the dirt, all the garbage, all the junk is being filtered out in my gravity-fed filter system before it gets to the pump and before it sends it to the bead filter. So the bead filter is just receiving clean water, okay? Um, now, that affects the biological activity because with no sludge and sediment buildup inside of a bead filter, um, the beads can grow an incredible amount of bacteria, um, you know, and do this whole nitrogen cycle and help keep the pond balanced, um, which I have videos explaining the nitrogen cycle and how filters work too. Please, you know, check out all that stuff so you understand the whole concept of filtration and the different types of filters, all right? 
Um, but the bead filters work extremely well uh, biologically when all of the sediment and sludge is filtered out before it gets there. Okay. Um, these gravity fed filters also help with keeping your pumps clean. Okay. The impellers, the pump trap, you know, the basket in front of the pump stays cleaner because we're not pulling water and sludge and sediment directly from a pond into a pump first. Okay. All that water is going through the drains, through the pipes, into the bottom of my gravity fed filter, filters through all the media gets cleaned and then the pump pulls the clean water out and sends it back okay so that's roughly you know the difference um, I also have videos on um, <laughs> the difference in ponds that have rock and gravel in the bottom as opposed to no rock and gravel and using bottom drains all right um, check that out okay there's a lot of good thoughts and information there I don't use rock and gravel in the bottom of any pond I build okay I understand the draw to that I understand it looks nice at first okay because eventually it will start turning green eventually all that rock and gravel is going to start holding the sediment all right I don't want all that sludge and crap you know decaying at the bottom of my pond i want to keep that pond as clean as i can right and get all that sediment and dirt to go right down those bottom drains and out to my filters all right so anyway you can watch all those videos and, and learn a lot about all that stuff and and my ideas and theories behind everything um i'm not saying one way is right and one way is wrong okay you know, using rock and gravel, using bottom drains, they're two different concepts. Um, you know, <laughs> it's up to you to choose, you know, which, which you, which you want to do, okay? Um, but check out those videos, it might give you some insights. So anyway, okay, so how do we install these gravity-fed filter systems? Basically, it's a pretty simple concept, okay? We're using, we dig in our hole for the pond, all right, we're putting a, we're dig, gonna dig a trench, first of all. We're gonna dig a trench from um, where we're gonna put our filter tank, okay? Set our filter tank in the ground. Now, the filter tank I usually set about three to four inches, like the top of the tank, about three to four inches above the water level of my pond. So I use a laser to shoot my levels, okay? So I know where my water level of the pond is. I go back to where I'm gonna put my filter. I shoot my level there. I set the tank in the ground and I adjust it to the right height, okay? So that the top of the tank is three to four inches above the water level of the pond. Reason for this, we don't want that filter tank to overflow when we fill our pond up with water, okay? Um, we want it to be able to hold a full pond right a, the volume of the full pond you know in the filter so once we have our filter set in the ground at the right level we're going to come out of the filter tank with a four inch bulkhead fitting uh, maybe one maybe two maybe more okay depending on how many bottom drains we need again that's all in my other videos um, we'll come off of the filter tank and we'll use either a four inch gate valve okay like a night valve that closes um, or a four inch ball valve okay um, the thing with the four inch ball valves is they can be um, cheaper but very hard to turn or they could be a lot more expensive but easier to turn okay um, if I'm doing a real high-end pond I'm using um, the expensive ball valves and they could be almost three hundred dollars a piece um, if it's just the average pond I'm using a gate valve okay hundred bucks all right um, but the purpose of this is to be able to shut the water flow off between the pond and the filter so when, when it comes time to cleaning the filter tank I can close that valve ball valve or gate valve whatever it is and stop the water from the pond from coming into my filter so then I can remove the media and the filter drain my filter tank clean it right and and you know be able to set it all back up and then open it all up again 
Um, but from that valve, we're going to run a four inch line all the way back to the pond. Okay, maybe two, maybe three, maybe four, whatever we need, okay, depending on the size of the pond and the filter tanks. Um, as that four inch pipe comes back to the pond, okay, um, we need to then, then go on a 45 degree angle back down underneath the pond, all right, and then another 45 angle across the pond to where we're going to put our bottom drain, all right. So that's what we do. We set in all that plumbing, four inch bottom drain out, right, to the side of the pond. Then we're going 45 up, right? Then we're going another 45 straight back into our filter tank. Or, I mean, we may just, depending on how big our filter tank is and how the depth and where the pipes come in, okay, um, that'll determine, you know, how far down or wherever we have to put our pipes, all right? Um, I'm trying to show you some pictures here, uh, you know, of, of some of the plumbing and pipe work, but every pond is different, but you kind of get the idea, all right? Um, now, once this is all set up, okay, it really functions really well. Um, again, watch my videos on the bottom drains, watch my other video on gravity-fed filters. We talk a lot about water flow through the pipes, you know, how much water can one bottom drain, four inch drain supply to uh, the filter system, okay? That's all in my other videos. If I put it all here, I'll be here for two hours. Um, so check it out, okay? So once our tank is in the ground, it basically works um, like this. I explain it as two cups of water with a straw in between. One cup of water is the pond. The straw is all the plumbing from the bottom drain to the, to the uh, filter tank. And the other cup of water is the filter tank. All right, so basically how this happens is if you pour water into one cup, the water is gonna go through the cup, right, through that straw, and it's gonna fill up the other cup at the same time. So if you pour water into one cup, both cups fill up at the same time. So that's exactly how this uh, works in a gravity-fed filter system. Now, the difference is, what happens is, say this cup here, okay, is my filter system. As the pump pulls the water out of the filter, that water level is gonna drop a little bit. When this water level drops, this water level in the pond, in the other cup, okay, is going to want to refill it. It wants to stay balanced. It wants to st stay at even, okay? So when the water level drops in one, it's going to make this water going to want to fill it back up again, all right? So as we're pulling water out of the filter tank, okay, the water from the pond is refilling the filter tank, and then the pump is returning it back to the pond. So it's a constant circular, like, system um, circulating the water, all right? It's um, very, very efficient, okay? It works extremely well. And it's, to me, the best way to filter and run a pond, all right? Um, <clears throat> I don't like putting suction pipes into a pond, to the bottom of the pond, and suck the garbage out directly you know, through that strainer that can get clogged in the pond or a sump pump or something that's pulling the crap directly into the pump or strainer that can clog and, or, you know, pulling the water into an external pump and then the, the pump trap can get clogged up with debris. I want all that debris, all that crap that just settled down to the bottom of the pond, go through those bottom drains and right out. All right. Now, all these ponds, um, the bottom of the pond has a slight pitch to it, okay, down to the bottom drain. So that any sediment that comes down, you know, over here will eventually work its way down to the lowest part where my bottom drain is. And everything goes down into that drain and out. These ponds stay extremely clean. They never have to be drained and cleaned. Um, they, they work really, really well, okay? So 
Okay, so now you kind of understand how the concept of these gravity fed filters work. Now, I build my own tanks, all right? I build my own filter tanks. I use um, these Rubbermaid stock tanks. They're strong, they're durable tanks. Um, you know, I drill the holes through the sides with a big four inch hole saw. Um, I put my bulkhead fittings through them. Um, they work really, really well, okay? Um, <clears throat> you can cover these tanks now with, uh, I cover them with bluestone. Uh, I cover them with um, sometimes decking material. I can build a deck over them. If I build a big tank, I might do it out of concrete. Um, and, you know, cover it all with decking. Okay, so there's, there's a lot of different things you can do. All right, um, now cleaning them, okay? I wanna talk about cleaning them and how we keep them clean. So uh, basically for many of my clients, I do contracts where I go once a month and I clean these gravity filters out once a month, all right? Um, some people, I don't clean them. They kind of say they do it themselves and you know, um, some people do keep up with it once a month, some people don't. And when they don't, you know, maybe uh, two to three months down the road, they give me a call and say, you know, this isn't working right, or the water flow, you know, water flow is slowing down, or whatever. And I go over there and I see that the filter is just a mess. All right, these filters work extremely well. Um, the quicker they get dirty, the better they work. Okay, um, so. <clears throat> keep up with it you know once a month seems to be great it takes me all of 20 minutes to a half hour to clean these filters if that some of them are even easier just depends on how big the system is and how much stuff I have to clean in there but it really is pretty simple um, all it's going to require is I use a wet dry shop vac or a sump pump in, in bigger, um, bigger filter tanks that I have, and your water hose with a nice nozzle with a good spray jet on it, all right? So, I wanna show you some pictures here. This is a filter tank that I have on a pond. Um, this is, it's a nice little pond. It's maybe a 10, 10 by 10, 10 by 12 size pond. It's basically a little water garden. We've got a bunch of water plants, some lilies in there, um, and then a variety of fish, some goldfish, some shabunkin, some fantails, um, just a nice little garden pond, okay? Um, and the filters here, okay, I'm gonna show you these filters. We open up the filter first. We oh, This one has blue stone on the top. We slide the blue stone off. And inside the tank, we have basically from the bottom to the top, okay, I'll explain to you what happens. I have on the bottom of the tank, I have some four inch PVC pipes cut about six inches high. Um, I have a number of them on the bottom of this filter tank. and. And from there, we have like three layers of filter pads that go on top of them. Um, and in between each layer of filter pad, there's a plastic material called Ankamat. Um, Ankamat is actually an erosion control material, but it's a nice plastic um, material that's about three quarters of an inch to an inch thick. Um, and what this does for me basically is I use it as a spacer like in between the filter pads So it just kind of gives a little more space a little more settlement in between the pads So we do a layer of filter pad a layer of ink a mat a layer of filter pad layer of ink a mat Layer of filter pad right usually three layers of pads two layers of ink a mat um, and then on top of that, I have these nylon mesh media bags that are filled with a ribbon material called biofill. Um, it's a very lightweight ribbon. Um, it used to be years ago, people would use these nylon mesh bags and put lava rock in it. Um, that's old, right? We don't do that anymore. It, it's, it's not as efficient. It doesn't hold as much bacteria and it's heavy. Um, it, it, it's not as heavy as normal rock, but it is still heavy. The bags end up ripping eventually. Um, it just, biofill as ribbon is really a great material. But whatever you wanna do, if you wanna do a media bag with, with bio balls in it or whatever, it's just some extra biofiltration, okay? The concept is all these filter pads are gonna collect the sediment, the sludge, the silt, the, the muck out of the water, okay? 
Um, now, these PVC pipes that I put on the bottom of the tank are basically to keep the filter pads up off of the bottom. Okay, so here's the bottom of my tank, my filter pads are here, and my four inch bulkhead fitting is coming in here. Okay, underneath those filter pads. So basically what it allows is all that water and dirt and sludge and leaves and whatever coming directly in from the pond underneath those filter pads. So all the heavy sediment and debris and mud and muck can settle here on the bottom and then the water can filter through the pads, okay? And by the time it gets up to where the um, biofill is, those bags of biological media, um, the water's clean. Okay, um, and then my pump pulls the water out from there. Um, one little trick, I have my suction pipe coming in. I usually use a 45 degree elbow to come in and to adjust, you know, the pipe down on either side. Um, and then I have a two inch check valve okay right there um, to hold the water in that suction line to the pump so if the pump ever shuts off it holds its prime so when the power comes back on or something or I plug it back in the pump is already primed and it'll just start running okay so a two inch check valve in there is really important now the other little trick that I just um, would mention is that you have to be careful and maybe if you want to put a little suction strainer on the end of that pipe just in case a little fish gets in the filter or a frog or something gets in the filter right he won't get sucked up into your pump um, so maybe a little suction strainer there um, and you know or just if it's an open pipe coming down like an open end maybe Put a little flat stone or something underneath that pipe on top of the filter pad so that the suction from the pipe, from the pump, doesn't suck the filter pad up to it and, and, and block it and clog it, like, okay? So I just put a little stone down. Um, sometimes I use that uh, media, the biofill, the ribbon, on top of that suction pipe. So all the water is being sucked down through that media to the suction pipe and then out to the pump. Um, what that helps with also is if you just have an open pipe coming in, if it's not too far you know, down deep into the water, you're kind of going to get that little tornado suction, you know, and you know, sucking the air down into the pump. So I cover it, you know, with the, with the media and it pulls all the water through the media and, and, you know, out to the pump. So that seems to work pretty well for me. Okay, so cleaning it, all right, now you know how it's set up and why. Um, cleaning it, basically we're gonna come in there, I close the gate valve or ball valve, okay, to stop the water flow from the pond into the tank. Um, at that point, I leave the pump running for a little bit so it just sucks some of the water out of the tank. It's just less I have to remove myself. And it, you know, it'll suck some of the water out to the tank. Once the pump starts sucking air, all right, um, then I unplug the pump, all right. Um, we remove the bag of biofill, you know, which however many, two, three bags, whatever is in there. Um, the pipe from the pump, the suction pipe from the pump in there, I do not glue. Okay, so I can remove it, I can pull it out, and that just opens up the whole tank so I don't have a big pipe in the middle. And then I can pull out all those filter pads. And once all those filter pads are out, we're just gonna take our garden hose, right, and spray them all down, wash them down. Uh, maybe hang them on a fence. Um, sometimes I use that Inca mat, okay, those plastic mats. I take them out, I put them on the ground first. I'll just lay them out on the ground. And then I'll put my filter pad on top of it and wash them down through that. So all the muck can come out of the filter pads and just, you know, run away on the lawn. Um, and we wash it all down, we clean all those pads, okay? Um, and then I use a wet dry shop vac. Um, just if you have a wet dry shop vac, inside the vacuum there is like a dust filter, okay? So that, you know, if you're vacuuming up, you know, in your garage or something and you're sucking up dust and dirt, that filter keeps um, that dust and dirt from blowing out the exhaust of the vacuum, okay? Um, but I remove that. 
when we're cleaning our ponds filters because I we're using water, okay? Um, and I just I want the sludge and debris just to, you know all get sucked up in that get clogged up in any way in that filter. So I remove those little dust filter things, those round cartridges. But just suck out all the water, uh, um, the rest of the water in the pond, you know, dump it out um, with your shop vac or if you want to use a little sump pump and, and suck it out. Um, and then clean all that sludge, all that sediment, all the muck in the bottom of that filter tank, leaves, whatever, acorns could be in there, um, just whatever, you know, algae, whatever's in there. Suck it all out with the shop vac, wash it down, make it nice and clean, like brand new, all right? Once it's all clean and new, set those pipes back up. You can use four inch pipes, sometimes I do that because I have extra pieces when I do the plumbing and I can just zip, 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 cut them and use them for the filter. Um, other things, we can use bricks, we can use pavers, we can use block, we can use anything, you know, anything you can think of to, you know, big round rocks if you want to put a few in to hold the filter pad up. All we need to do is hold that filter pad up above the inlet of that bowl four inch pipe coming into the tank, into the bottom, all right? Um, so once it's all cleaned, we're going to just put it all back together, all right? Once the filter's all put back together, all the pads are in, everything is set up, then we just go, we open that gate valve or ball valve again and all the water from the pond is just going to come gushing in and fill up that filter tank again. Once the tank's full, open the lid of the pump, prime the pump back up, okay, you know, put our suction pipe back in with that check valve, fill our pump back trap up with water, prime the pump, put the lid on the pump, plug it in, away we go. And, the, and you're all set. That's, that's, it's done, okay? Um, again, you know, 20 minutes, half hour, tops, and you're done, okay? It's, it's, it's a little messy, can be a little dirty. If you keep up with this on a regular basis, like once a month, okay, your job is gonna be a lot easier than if you let it go for three months or four months or five months, okay? And then you open this up and it's a disgusting mess, all right? Um, so, you know, keep up with it. It's not a difficult job. It's not rocket science. Um, you know, for most of these filters, like I said, a wet dry shop vac is all you need, all right? A bigger filter tank with a lot more water, you might wanna drop a sump pump in there and pump all that water out quicker. Okay, um, and a hose, right? Just wash everything down. Um, so, yeah, if you have any questions, you know, um, let me know in the comments. I can certainly try to answer questions for you, but watch my other videos because I think just about anything and everything that you would question <laughs> is all there on my other videos as well, all right? Now, there's all different types of filters, right? Gravity-fed filters. Um, I build my own. All the concepts are the same, however, all right? It's the same concept no matter how, what these different filters are like and who makes them or whatever, all right? Um, same basic idea. So just, you know, modify whatever, you know, information you need to to fit your system, okay? But otherwise, um, that, that's pretty much it. So I hope that helped you out and gave you some insights on how these work and how to clean them. Um, you know, please check out those other videos. There's a lot of good information in there about it. If you're interested in doing a gravity-fed filter system or learning about them, uh, I think my videos can really help you out, you know, with understanding them and knowing how, to, how they all work. Um, always remember, your filter systems are the heart of your pond, okay? Your filter system is going to dictate how successful and healthy your pond is going to be, all right? So um, don't skimp on it. Do it right, you know? Do it once, do it right. That's kind of my little thing, right? Do it once, do it right.